Fred Halsted. Fred Halsted, July 17, 1941, May 9, 1989, was an American gay pornographic film director, actor, escort, publisher, and sex club owner. His films Sex Garage and L.A. Plays Itself are the only gay pornographic movies in the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art, where they were screened before a capacity audience on April 23, 1974. A screening of L.A. Plays itself was sponsored by the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art on February 28, 2013, and another took place on December 16, 2011, at the Los Angeles Art Gallery Human Resources. His films have also been shown the Netherlands Film Museum and in competition at the Deauville Film Festival. Halsted more or less created the world of gay sexual art and experimentation. He then watched it, and himself, be destroyed by AIDS, a sanitizing of gay sexual tastes and the power of addiction. Halsted was a sex radical. He believed that the erotic is transgressive and sacramental, that it is inherently violent and involves acts of violation. Sex is not coming, that is superficial sex, he once explained. Mine is personal cinema. I don't fuck to get my rocks off. In the best scenes I've ever had, I haven't come. I am not interesting in coming. I am interested in getting my head off, my emotions off. Early life and career. Halsted was born in Long Beach, California in 1941. His father, Milton William Halsted, worked in construction, and his mother, Lillian Halsted Nee Samuelov, was a Dow Cobber and did agricultural work. Milton abandoned the family when Fred was three. His mother was remarried to John Knight, who raped Fred when he was eight, which he described as a turning point in his sexual identity. He attended high school in Bakersfield, California and San Jose, California, and he described himself as a student politician, which led to his failing all his classes. Halsted studied botany at Cal State LA and subsequently worked as a gardener and was in the nursery plant business. He owned a wholesale nursery in El Monte, California. He later said he looked back on his years as a gardener as the happiest days of his life. He never held a regular job nor had a social security number. His long-term lover, though, with interruptions was Joseph Yanoska, who appears in his movies under the name Joe Yale. They were called sadomasochism's heaviest couple. Halsted wrote autobiographical pieces about his promiscuous gay sex life. Halsted was a good friend of Kenneth Anger, and he loved Scorpio Rising. He said that I consider myself a pervert first and a homosexual second. Also, he considered sadism more basic to my personality than homosexuality. L.A. Plays Itself, 1972. The movie begins with a shot of a sign at the city limits of Los Angeles, giving its population at the time 2,535,700. An overheard conversation contains the words, Los Angeles stinks. Mists over the canyons of Malibu are seen. Halsted, taking a walk in the forest, sees a naked blonde, who offers to give him head. Their sexual encounter is interrupted by shots of approaching bulldozers. Halsted was concerned about development, destroying the wild areas of the Santa Monica Mountains. In the second part of the movie, an older man Halsted tortures a young innocent Halsted's lover Joseph Yale. A voiceover states that the youth is a cowboy hustler just arrived from Texas. The youth is bound, beaten, and kicked. At the climax, he is fisted with a close-up of a can of Crisco, usual lubricant for fisting at that time. Yale refused to be fisted and a double was used. According to Halsted, this was the first time fisting was shown on screen. At the end, he is bound and left helpless in a closet. The action is not one continuous scene. 
It is punctuated by Halstead driving through Griffith Park, a gay cruising spot also featured in John Ritchie's City of Night. In the park, unidentified men appear, the camera focusing on their dirty pants, especially crotches baskets, in gay slang and asses. There are also interspersed newspaper headlines about weird cults and the Manson murders, ads pushing 101 varieties of meat, shots of hustlers, bums, vagrants, porn theaters. The film ends on shots of newspapers saying that a young man was found dead after being tortured. According to the film's cinematographer Tom, there was no screenplay. Random footage was shot, which Halstead was capable of sorting out and putting in a sequence. Halstead described it thus, it was okay to be openly gay, but to get into S and M was another trip. One of the purposes of L.A. plays itself was to get S and M and allied perversions out on the screen where people could look at them, think about them, analyze them, let it affect them, whatever they wanted, but not have it hidden anymore, and leave it open where people can deal with it easily. He has been quoted as saying that the film was highly autobiographical. L.A. plays itself was a huge sensation when it opened in New York. The movie was praised by Fernando Rabel, William Burroughs, and Al Goldstein, but was misunderstood by most homosexuals and film critics. After seeing it, Burroughs sought out Halstead to discuss a collaboration Terry Southern was also involved to film Burroughs' The Wild Boys as a hardcore porn film. The project was abandoned as financially unviable. A 2003 documentary, Los Angeles Plays Itself, takes its title from Halstead's movie. Sex Garage 1972 Sex Garage was a 35-minute black and white short. It was produced after L.A. Plays Itself was completed, but before its release, it was intended to accompany the longer movie. It takes place in an auto repair facility garage. As it begins, a woman takes her car to the garage for service and performs fellatio on her long-haired mechanic boyfriend. A male arrives with a car for service, scaring off the woman, who has just reached her climax. He starts servicing the mechanic and is forced to put on the woman's discarded panties. A long-haired, bearded biker arrives, wearing a dirty jockstrap. He fucks the man wearing the panties. The mechanic thrusts his head into a toilet. The biker ejaculates onto the motorcycle seat. Aki's Jesu, Joy of Man's Desiring, performed on a piano, is background music, as is When Tomorrow Comes by the Emotions. There are many atmosphere shots of vehicles, of the Hollywood freeway, and of billboards on Sunset Strip. Eroticus, A History of the Gay Movie, 1974. Eroticus is a history of the gay pornographic movie, directed by Tom de Simone. It is narrated by Halstead, seated in a director's chair, at first fully clothed, then naked, then masturbating. A double was used in the latter part, not out of modesty but to have a bigger penis and a more impressive ejaculation. He reaches a climax during a montage of cum shots set to Ravel's Bolero. According to the box cover of the Bijou video release, Halstead, Dick in Hand, narrates this survey of gay pornography, starting with the Apollo Physique magazines, which eventually evolved into eight loops and eventually into hardcore full-length movies. It contains excerpts from Boys in the Sand, Dust Unto Dust, L.A. Plays Itself, Confessions of a Male Groupie, Tarzan the Fearless Classified Capers, The Collection, Assault, One the First Orgasm Shown in a Gay Movie, and Yes 1969, The First Explicit Sex Shown in Theaters. The climactic fisting scene from L.A. Plays Itself was first included but deleted in later versions. Halstead never forgave de Simone for reducing his compensation because a double penis had been used. Also, 
DeSimone reused the shot of the Los Angeles Times headline New Weird Cult, linked to tape murder from L.A. Plays itself but suggests, as L.A. Plays itself did not, that there was a link between gay BDSM and the Manson murders. This was offensive to Halstead, who denounced the film in conversation and in print. According to Al Goldstein, publisher of the pornographic tabloid Screw, Frame for Frame, it contains more sex than any gay film ever released. Sex Tool 1975. Halstead's next feature, Sex Tool, was intended to be a crossover success. Like L.A. Plays Itself and Sex Garage, it was produced, written, directed, edited, photographed, and starred in by Halstead. It is centered around a party where a relatively innocent, married young man discovers the diverse sex practices of a dozen people. Sex Tool explores a fantasy Los Angeles populated by policemen, boxers, leathermen, a sailor, and one questionably straight man squiring his American transgender paramour. Whites are chauffeurs for the blacks, and two cops rape someone in the police station. The topic of the movie, according to Halstead, was sexual politics. It has been described as an artwork and not immediately appealing to those who watch gay porn for sexual purposes. Halstead chose to use 35mm film, hoping the movie would get shown in art houses, but the film only puzzled or offended the theater managers. Few of the theaters that did show gay pornographic movies had 35mm projectors. A result, the film received very limited distribution. The use of the more expensive film meant Halstead was not able to shoot much transitional material, leading to a choppy effect. The Museum of Modern Art, as a result of the success of the showing of L.A. Plays Itself and Sex Garage, acquired a copy of Sex Tool for its collection. Package Magazine In 1976 and 1977, Halstead edited and published a magazine, Package, a journal of men, fact and opinion, according to its cover, containing sex news, contact ads, and stories of Halstead's erotic life. It is known to have published six issues. El Paso Wrecking Corp., 1977. Halstead had an important role in El Paso Wrecking Corp., second of the Working Man trilogy directed by Joe Gage. After some drinking triggers, a fight Gene played by Halstead and Hank are fired from their job at the Kansas City Trucking Company. Determined to land some other kind of blue-collar work, the two gay men begin looking and drive to El Paso, but are often distracted by sex and water sports with the men they meet on their job search. Some of the scenes of the original movie are missing in recent video releases. When El Paso Wrecking Corp. first opened, it caused big shock waves all across gay America, but since then it's picked up as easily as fashion, wear your jackets and chains. It's macho ed up gay America, which I think is a good thing. Straight play and movie. Halstead played a hustler in the play News for Tennessee by Joseph S. Caruso, produced at the Pilot Theater in Los Angeles in 1978. His lover Joseph Yanosko also had a part. Halstead had a cameo role in the 1979 movie Dribble later released as scoring. Halstead's Sex Club. Halstead's, located at 2453 Glendale BLVD. Silver Lake, Los Angeles, California, was, as he himself described it, a naked industrial space transformed into a stand-up fuck club. Founded by Halstead, his lover Joseph Yale, and David Webb, the club had booths with glory holes, beds, and a sling. Its most distinguishing characteristic was four truck trailers that were parked in the back inside a walled yard. At the time, empty truck trailers were a popular venue for gay sex in the meatpacking district of New York City. The club only lasted about a year. Halstead admitted that Los Angeles did not have enough perverts to support the club. Before it closed, he filmed there a night at Halstead's.
A Night at Halsted's 1982. A Night at Halsted's does not have a plot. It consists of a series of sex scenes at the club of the same name, preceded by a brief introduction and followed by a similarly brief conclusion. Except for these two parts, the sound of the movie is all in voiceover. The box cover of the movie states, Only Fred Halsted could create a fantasy land where anything and everything goes, a place where you can meet the video stars of your dreams and make them come true. Glory holes, mirrors, slings, and other toys become a living playground for this orgy of tight, glistening flesh. Fred Halsted's crowning achievement. Later years. Halsted was never to make another hit movie. By the late 1970s, Fred was falling apart. He used drugs and drank. His lover, Joseph Janoska, died of AIDS in 1986 after having said to Fred, you did this to me. Fred was despondent after Joseph's death. He briefly advertised his services as an escort. He died in 1989 of an intentional overdose of sleeping pills. His suicide note said, I had a good life. I've had looks of body, money, success, and artistic triumphs. I've had the love of my life. I see no reason to go on. Partial Filmography According to the Internet Adult Film Database and the Gay Erotic Video Index, Halsted appeared in the following movies. L.A. Plays Itself, 1972. Eroticus, A History of the Gay Movie, 1975. El Paso Wrecking Corp. 1977. Army of Loaders, or Revenge of the Perverts, 1979 documentary. Three Day Pass, 1979. Pieces of Eight, 1980. A Night at Halsted's, 1982. Nighthawk in Leather, 1982. Fast Friends, 1987, and he directed the following films. Sex, Garage, 1972. Truck It, 1973. Earth Man, 1979. California Fox, 1979. Mustang, 1979. Century, 1980. Breaker Blue, 1988. He also appeared in the following compilations. Filth and the Fury, 1990. Sack Wranglers, 2005. Patriot Ass 2005, Queer Fist 2006, Fred's Company Costco distributed and in most cases produced 24 gay pornographic films between 1973 and 1985. King Size Both in 1984 and directed by Joseph Yale and many shorts.